What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video we're looking at revolves and I'm going to look at revolves in a family as well as just in a basic project when it comes to modeling in place. So I'll go to families, new, and we're going to go just to a basic generic model. We'll get into all the other types of families later, but we'll just use a generic model now for this. Right now I've got a basic level, I'm on the floor plan level of the generic model. And we're going to make a revolve. It's in the create tab up here and it's called revolve. I'm going to click revolve and there's a couple of things that you need to do when you're making a revolve. You're going to have to deal with boundary lines and again this is like every other thing that involves a boundary in Revit whether it's a floor anything absolutely anything it needs to be a closed loop it needs to actually complete it's a closed loop and Revit won't let you move on once you before you have the closed loop. So we're gonna make sure to have the closed loop. But we also have this axis line to be aware of. And so what this axis line is, if I had to give a comparison, I would say it's it's essentially something you would revolve around. I know that's exactly what the tool is called, but it's you're drawing essentially the line that your profile or the boundary lines will revolve around. So I can compare this to, imagine you're holding a broom straight up and down and you've got your arm extended, you're holding the broom and that broom is going to be our axis line. And so at that point, hold the broom in place and then just walk in a circle around the broom. So you, in that circumstance, would be considered the boundary lines or the, the profile, whatever we're about to draw. And then that broom again is the axis line and you'd revolve around it. So I hope that makes more sense. If you think about that as we go throughout this video, making the axis line and boundary lines to create the revolve, it might help make a little more sense because revolves to, de to this day still confuse me because I get wrapped around them on the wrong side, the wrong word playing something. But I'm ho I hope that this video will do just that and help you understand what's going on. If at any point during this video you do learn something, please demolish that like button. It really helps. Also change the phase of that subscribe button to existing that also helps me let's get right into this revolve so i'm in the revolve tool we first need to either draw an axis line or draw the boundary line i personally like to draw the axis line first because that is going to determine everything else that i draw based on location everything you can do this in any work plane again everything is work plane based and so let's go to the axis line you, there's no other option other than picking lines or offsetting. We don't need to worry about any of those. I'm not trying to get fancy or do anything weird. You can do that in your own project if you need to. At this point, we just need to draw the axis line. So I'm in a reference level plan and I can draw this however I want. So I'm going to draw it straight up and down. So what this will do is create this axis line. And again, the length doesn't matter. It's just giving us a direction to go off of the axis line is essentially shooting off in one direction. And again, I'm looking straight up and down. This is shooting off you know, north. You can call it whatever you want. At this point, I need to draw my boundary line. But I want to show you in 3D what this looks like first. Okay, it's just a line, obviously, but where are we in 3D? Well, let's, let's go ahead and show our work plane. I know that's not going to help all that much just because it's small and it's down here, but we can, we can go ahead and extend this so it makes a little more sense. So our work plane is currently the ground because we were on the reference plane when we drew this. So the, the thing to point out with Revolve is that you're drawing both the axis line and your profiles or boundary lines on the same work plane. So we're going to have to draw those boundary lines on this work plane as well, regardless of where it is. I'm going to go back to my reference plane or reference level. I'm going to stop showing the work plane and I'm going to draw my my boundary line again this is this can be anything you want it can touch this axis line it can do anything it wants i'll show you different examples of that but i'm just going to make a couple random shapes here and we can see there there's my closed line i will hit accept and now we have our revolve we can see this in 3d a little better and there's our revolve it's very simple once i click on the revolve i've got some other options so by default the revolve will be completed it will be 360 degrees around, but if you look over here in our constraints, we've got our inlay angle and start angle. You can start adjusting those. Maybe this is just half. It's 180 degrees, so we can see that it's cut in half very easily right there. You can always add materials, do anything you want. You can, that's essentially all that you need to know about creating the void. 
Now let's show some more examples of what, he, what we can do here. We can attempt to add multiple profiles into the same Revolve, so let's just make a second one. I can choose to check and that works perfectly, so I'm getting the same result, but now I've got these two profiles. They're both revolving around each other. Now this looks kind of weird because I'm on the, the base level plane, I'm in, on the reference level. So we can just go pick a new plane. So let's go to our, our front view here. I'm going to zoom in here, click on my revolve, and I'm gonna pick a new plane. And you, as you can see, I can't pick any plane, but it's because it's trying to pick a face. There's no face that is currently modeled on this work plane. So let's just pick the work plane. And this work plane is going to choose the work plane of the view. In this case, I'm on my front elevation. So that's perfect. I'm gonna choose that. Let's go ahead and just move this down to the center just so that makes a little more sense. I'll go back to 3D and we can see now it's straight up and down, it makes sense. Great, that's awesome. I'm gonna go back to my uh, my front elevation view and it's gonna ask me, hey, where, you know, where do you want to edit this? Because now I'm in a different view. I, again, I set it up on a different work plane. I will open it in front view, so now I'm just in a different, I'm in my front view here, no longer on the reference plane, doing all of my edits. So we can, we can get kind of weird or fancy with this if you want, and we can have things touch the, the axis. That's fine. Everything works out there. If I go back to 3D, I can see, yep, it works. Everything fits just like that. I can have, you can take it really as far as you want because it's all, it's all based on, it is all based on this axis and then everything else that you add to the profile. So I can take this profile and I can throw it way out here. I can even rotate it. I can do, you can take this as far as you want. And I mean that figuratively and actually. I can accept and then my revolve is still, it's still here. It is, it's huge now, but it's again following that axis line. Everything is based on that axis line. And after, you, after that, you can draw whatever profile you want. It's very simple at that point. I could come in here and we could get a little fancy with the axis line. So maybe we don't change the location of this profile, we can leave it here, but now let's see what happens whenever we change this axis line. Well, we can see that, again, the profile stays the same, but it follows and revolves around that axis line. So going back into 3D, now it looks significantly the same, except now it's on an angle because I changed the angle of that reference line, or that axis line, sorry. Something you need to be aware about, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna straighten this out one more time, is if you have any part of your profile extending from one side of the axis line to the other, you're asking for trouble. And let's think about this logically before I finish this sketch. Before I finish the revolve, what, what we think is gonna happen? Well, this, this geometry, this profile is going to attempt to revolve around this axis line. And that makes sense, there's nothing wrong with that, but what happens after this starts to spin? It's gonna start revolving almost on itself because it's on one side and the other and you, you have this kind of nasty overlap of geometry. And while you think it could or should be able to do that, like other programs like Rhino can do this, you wouldn't necessarily want it to just because you have a piece of itself inside of it. It's just kind of, it's it hurts the head, but to make things easier on you, Revit will just say, you can't do it, you can't do it. So I'm gonna finish the sketch and I get the profile must not cross the axis of revolution. Obviously, I just said that, that makes sense. We have to make sure that that does not fall within either side or both sides of the axis. Perfect, makes sense, very simple. That's gonna be the last thing to where you really need to know about revolves. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. You can start to change things as you want, where you want. So let's go back, let's go into a project. I'll do file, project, new project, architectural template. This is gonna be nothing that's all that different. I'm just gonna show you what you can do in, in your project. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to a south elevation view. I will go to co component, model in place. We can, again, it can just be a, mo a generic model. I'll keep it generic model one, revolve. I would always recommend naming things. So I, as soon as I click on Revolve, I get work plane. Well, what, what work plane do we want to work on? Well, you know, we could be level one, level two. That's fine, doesn't matter. I can pick a plane, that's fine. I'll just go back to level one. 
I'll open the floor plan level one, and I'll start to draw my axis. Again, this is all the same. Nothing's really going to change. I'm gonna draw my boundary just like this. At this point, I hit the green check mark, and there we go. Green check mark again. And in 3D, now I have this into my project. You can again, you can make this as a family, model in place, whatever you want. I'd recommend a family. I am partial to family just because of the capabilities that they provide and how simply they can be made to improve your project, but also they're not going to bog down your project as all these generic models that are going to show up in your project. There'll be specific families that you model. That's going to do it for the Revolve tool. It's pretty simple, but there are just some things you need to be aware about. Again, if you learned something, please demolish that like button. It really helps. And also change the phase of that subscribe button to existing. Always like seeing that. I sure hope you did learn something, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I sure hope to see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.